Hi, welcome to this segment of Woodworking with Wes. Today we're going to build shaker doors table saw style. few preliminaries. Styles are the parts that go up and down, rails are the parts that go across, panel is your centerpiece. We're going to do three inch style and rail set today with a shaker flat style and rail set and that's why we can do it on a table saw. First thing you got to do when you build a set of doors is you've got to know what you're building. We're building a set of shaker style doors for a job that I've done for a kitchen cabinet and so the first thing I do is I list the size of doors. You can see my worksheet. This is the size of doors here. Then we do the styles, the up and down part, and I list how many and what size. Three inches by the length. Then I come down here and I do the math. I calculate the rail and I'm going to show you how to do the math here in just a minute. I have my rail sizes. Now I've, if you see I've listed my doors A, B, C, D and I've listed my rails A, B, C, D so that I can keep track of where goes what goes where and then here are my panel sizes down here again listed a b c d and the cut size so that when i go to the saw i know what i'm cutting out and where it goes let's look how to do the style and rail i made this sample door and put it together with what we call a dry fit no glue so that i could take it apart and show you how we build the style and rail pieces so let's do that let's knock it apart style and rail. Okay, your style and rail have a corresponding groove that you put in that is the same on both pieces. And you do this all the way around on the inside of your door. Your rail has a tongue that fits into the groove that you've put to complete your style and rail set and make your door go together as a, uh, a solid door. Let's go ahead now and go back to our stack of wood and show you how we get started milling all of this out. Okay, remember our worksheet? We've listed all of the parts here and everything. What I've done on all of my stack of lumber, and here's all our lumber, we've milled it to thickness and, and styles and rails are three inches, but I've cut all my stock to six and a half inches and I'll show you why we did that here in just a minute, is I've gone through and I have marked all of my boards with the pieces of wood that I need so that I can mark them off. You can see here where I've marked them off on my sheet as I've marked on my wood so that I know I have the proper amount of wood for each piece that I'm going to be making for the doors that I have to do. And so each one of these pieces in my stack, I've gone through and I've marked what size how big and I've made it a little long so that I can chunk it off on the chop saw and then trim it to square with my box sled on my table saw. We'll do that now. We've now gone to the chop saw and we've chunked our stock to a little extra than the length that we need so that we can trim it on our box. I messed up and so I and luckily I always mill an extra board to thickness and, and have it ready so that when I make a mistake that I have some material already ready to go. So I like I say I always start with my long stuff, cut to my short stuff, make sure you have an extra board just like I had to today. We're now getting ready to cut our styles and rails to exact size in our box sled on our table saw. We're going to do that, cut each piece square. This makes sure that everything is good and square and we'll cut the length by using the saw uh, fence and then the shorter lengths we'll use a stop block inside our box cut jig. So let's get started. Okay, we've now cut all our styles and rails to, to length. These are my styles. All of these are my rails. 
and I've laid them out so that I can make sure and check them off on my list. We talked about styles and rails only being three inches wide, but I cut all my stock six and a half inches wide. When we get ready to do the grooves and, and the end cuts, you'll see why. It's mostly for safety, to be able to hang on to the wood properly as it goes through the saw. The other thing is consistency. When I cut two pieces at once, both my style or both my rails and my styles are the exact same length all the time, every time consistency. And as you learned how to do cabinets and as you learn how to do doors and things like that, you'll find that accuracy is very important, but consistency is also important. So it's always important to remember ways to make sure that you can be consistent in your work. Work on your accuracy, but maintain your consistency. It'll help you when you do your doors. The style and rail set that we're using, we're going to do a 3 8 by quarter inch deep groove and a quarter inch thick by 3 8 deep uh, tongue so that the style and rail set goes together just like that, makes a nice square joint, and is nice and tight. And you want it to be just tight enough that you have to push a little pressure on there to push it together, and so that when the glue goes in there, it holds good and tight, and it keeps your door square. By doing all of our square cutting and making sure that we were square in everything that we do, now as we get ready to assemble our door, our door has a greater possibility of being square because we paid attention to square cuts all along. We also check our square when we put the door together, but this really helps us along to make sure when we make sure our square, our cuts are square, then our doors end up square. You'll notice as we get ready to do our groove that I have a heavy part and a thin part. This is the face of the door on this side, this distance being 3 8 of an inch and then our quarter inch groove and then the remainder is left over. Remember I milled my stock to 7 eighths before I got started so that I had a nice plump door to work with, but we want a 3 inch, uh, a three inch recess for our panel. So let's measure on our saw and get set up. The way I start to do that is I take a sample piece of wood. This is a scrap from our, our uh, style and rail cutouts. We mark 3 eighths of an inch on the edge of there, and then I put it up against the saw blade and raise that saw blade, or lower the saw blade, to the 3 8 mark so that I know where that is. Okay, we're right about 3 8 Now, I'm going to mark an X on what I want to use as the face side of my sample, so that I always remember that I turn my face side to my saw fence. Remember, we want to have a 3 8 recess, so we need to have 3 8 between the saw blade and the fence. Let's set that measurement, and I actually want it to be just a touch heavy, because as we sand, I want it to end up at 3 8 So we're going to start and... We're going to make our first cut. Let's check our measurement, and we are just a hair above 3 8 a little, little more than I want, so let's just tighten that up a little bit, make another cut, just a shade over 3 8 that's right where I want to be. Now remember, we also wanted our groove to be 3 8 so let's check that while we've got it cut here too. And we're right exactly where I want to be, 3 8 of an inch deep. We want to have that maybe a shade heavy, a shade extra deep, because we want to make sure that our tongue bottoms out when we put it into the groove when we assemble our doors so that we go together right. So we're going to raise that blade ever so slightly, just that much. Just 
just right. That's right where we want it. Just a, just a shade above that 3 8 and just a shade above that 3 8 there. Now we're ready to start making our groove. We'll make the preliminary cut, one cut saw blade width on everything and then go back and finish our cuts so that our groove is a quarter of an inch wide. We'll do all that now. Okay, that completed cutting all the grooves in the styles and rails. That completes the style part of it. They're done. Our rails, we now have to cut the tongue part and we'll do that next. But all the rails and all, all the styles, the groove part is finished. Okay, we've completed all of our grooves. Now we're getting ready to cut our tongues that are on the end of our rail stock. Remember, we wanted to be 3 8 of an inch deep, quarter inch wide. The quarter inch has to correspond with our groove and so we're going to let that determine how much shoulder stock we take off for our tongue. Let's set our saw to the depth of our bottom shoulder. Right like that. Now we're going to set it down a little bit more and then we're going to set our saw and come up and cut this just enough so that it breaks through the bottom part of our uh, rail stock. So let's do that. First thing let's do, set our saw. Now we remember we're going to be taking off 3 8 That includes the thickness of our saw. So we need to set our 3 8 to include our saw blade. And let's set it just a little shallow so that we can adjust and make it just right. Let's start right there. See, we haven't cut clear through yet. We're going to have to raise our blade a little bit. And then let's check our measurement. Needs to be 3 8 of an inch. And we are just ever so slight of 3 8 of an inch. So we're just going to give it a bump like that. And then we're going to give it a little tweak on the height like that. And then we're going to try it again and see where we are. Now see our saw blade has come through to our tongue on both sides, in fact even just barely right there if you notice that's just perfect, that's just what we want. And 3 8 just a little more. There we are, exactly 3 8 So we are set just perfect to cut the shoulder cut on our, um, style, our rail stock. Now we have to cut all of our rail stock here, so we're going to cut the back side first. Then we're going to flip it over and reset the depth and cut the same shoulder on the face side. But we, because we have more thickness here, we'll reset. But we'll do all the back sides first. Then we'll go around and do all the front sides, and then we'll cut the shoulder cuts. You can see how, as we cut these consistently, every cut is the same, every depth is the same, just barely breaking through there. This is just the perfect cut, and by cutting them all at the same time, they're all consistent. Remember, that's what I talked about, why we were doing, the one of the reasons we were doing double wide. This will now be split to make two rails, but all our cuts will be consistent because we've done two at a time. It allows us to hold on to the wood better for safety, but it also gives us a better end product because we're consistent, we're doing a pair at a time. Now we have the front part. It's got to look like that when we're all done. We have the right setting already set on our saw, so all we have to do is raise the blade and make sure that we cut just like this one, where we just barely broke through into the groove. So let's do that now. Oh, we got it just right. 
see see that little feather of wood that it just broke out there that's just perfect we got our setting just right the very first time never happens to me but we did it so now we'll cut all of the thick side of all of our rails and then our rails will have all of the shoulder cuts already made we'll do that now Okay, we're all done with our cuts front and back and we're getting now ready to take our cut off here so that we can create our tongue. Um, we'll do the small side first, so we'll cut that off and then we'll flip it around and reset the saw and do the large side. We want to set the height of our saw to just below the bottom of our groove or the height of our groove so let's start right there and then we want to just set our saw so it just barely takes away our stock so let's try that see how our first setting goes I think that's just exactly what we wanted. No, it looks like we're, we need to take just, just a little bit more off. I can, feel a, I can feel a little bit of a ridge here with my nail, which means we didn't quite take off enough material. That feels right, right there. So that creates the back side of our tongue. And we'll cut all the pieces with this cut, then we'll turn around, reset the saw, and cut all the pieces on the other side. So let's do that. Still cutting exactly the way we want to, and you can see how having a larger piece of wood helps keep your hands safe and away from the blade, because you have a bigger piece of wood to hold on to. Okay, we've completed all of the back cuts on all of our rail stock. Now we'll flip it around, reset our saw, and cut the front side. Now let's check and see if it fits where it's supposed to. Oh, that's going to be just right. We want it to fit a little tight. We want it to go together and we want to be able to kind of pound it in there and hold it. We don't want it to be loose. And I think we're just perfect right where we are. Let's cut the rest of the pile and we'll have our rail stock all cut. Okay, we've completed front and back cuts. Our tongues are available to us now to assemble the doors. Now we cut it into the three inch style and rail. This is where doing both of them at the same time has come in helpful and handy for us but we'll now split them into the three inch style and rail. So we'll set our saw at three inches. Perfect rails, ready to go. We'll cut the rest of them. Welcome back. Yesterday we milled all the parts for our doors. We did our styles, our rails, and overnight I cut the panels to get them ready to go. I'll show you how I cut the panels. But today we're going to assemble the doors and get ready to sand them. Now for panel stock, remember we talked about we did a quarter inch groove that was to receive our panel. But I wanted to use a half inch thick panel stock and so I've cut a, a lip on here to a quarter inch to fit into my panel stock or into my style and rail stock like that so that's what the back of the door will look like that's what the front of the door will look like and like I say I have cut all my panels to match so this is the back side of a small panel fits in there like that rail stock would be like this and all my panels are already cut I cut this on a table saw cut 
And what I did is I set it at a quarter of an inch, and ripped it a quarter of an inch, only part way down, and then I set my saw at a 15 degree bevel to create a little chamfer on here so it made a nice back cut. So that I had a nice back cut on my panel, my face is smooth. So let's get ahead, go ahead and get ready to assemble. Now, these are two panels for these two doors. Here is my rail stock, already ready to go, and here is my style stock, ready to go. One thing we need to do before we assemble is do some preliminary sanding. We need to sand the face of the panel, and I always sand the face of the panel 150 so that it's nice and smooth. I do that so that I don't have to go back and sand it afterwards. But the edges of our style and rail, where we cut with the table saws, have saw marks on it. And I'm sure I'm going to show you how we take that out too. So let's do that right now. What I do is I get me a nice uh, piece of wood stock block, and I, I have a, a self-adhesive sanding disc, and I put it on there, and I just sand with that disc, with that block. That takes my saw marks out, but still keeps my style stock and rail stock nice and flat and square. All I'm trying to do right now is take out my saw marks. If this were a stain and lacquer piece, I would. this is 120 grit, and that's all I need to do for paint uh, grade. But if this was a finished piece, like a piece of cherry or, or something like that, I would uh, come back after I sanded the saw marks out and sand with a finer grit so I had a finish uh, that was consistent with the face of it when I got all done so that we would have a nice finish. But on paint grade, all we need to do really is to take our saw marks out. So that's how we do that. We take our saw marks out before we sand, or before we assemble, so that we don't go, have to go back and do it afterwards. Because afterwards, think about how hard it would be Think about how hard it would be to try to sand that little edge after you're all assembled. By sanding beforehand, we make it nice and easy. Okay, we're getting ready to assemble our doors. I've sanded my edges, as I had just demonstrated how to do, and I've sanded my panel. I want to show you a little trick that I learned about how to kind of keep your door from being messy. This tongue and these edges are where we're going to apply glue. And so what I do is I lay that at the end, and I just mark, like that, how far I want my glue to go. Then I put my group of styles together that I'm going to be using for this size of door. And I just run a real light mark. Turn this one around so that I can get the other edge marked. Now I know where I want to put my glue. And I always, when I as assemble a set of doors, I turn out, this is the face side, and this is the face side, this is the back side, this is the back side, and I turn back to back and faces out so that I can glue my door up and then I take my two rails and I'll glue one up right now so you can see how I do it. And again, like I say, we made sure, we really worked hard making sure that all our cuts were square. So as we glue up our door, we're going to find our door very easily to, easy to square up because we paid a lot of attention to our cuts. Here's where we glue it up. I put a little glue on the face. And then a couple of drops inside the groove to glue the tongue. Okay, now like I say, we made this a little tight so we'd have to kind of fit it there tight, like that. We have our hammer. That's good. Now we have our panel, face side, back side. Right now the back side is to you. We put the panel in there, knock the panel down. Here's our other rail, or yeah, other rail. I slide that in there and slide that down. Nice and tight. 
Okay, and we put the other panel on, and, then, and like I said, we had it like this, so we just know that we can just bring it, turn it over, and all my faces are facing the right way. Just a way to keep it straight while you're working, it lets you go faster. Once I get it all put together like that, now I gotta make sure I square it up. The first thing I do is stand it. Get yourself a good hard bench. Pound down your rails so they're, or your style so they're uh, flush. And I always flush one end first. Okay, I'm good and flush on that end. A little spacer on there so that it gets up off the bench. When I clamp, I don't clamp right to the outside edge. I clamp more to the inside edge so that it pulls the uh, joint all the way across and it kind of lines up the other side of the door. Some of these things that I do, I do because I made lots of mistakes early on. But with 40 years of experience, you learn how to kind of speed things along and what makes things go easier and faster. Okay, we have one side glued up, clamped, and flush. Now we come back to our other side. Flush up our panel. Again, putting our clamp just a little bit to the inside. Tighten it down good and tight. Squeeze that joint together. This one needs a little encouragement. Okay, let's check for square. We talked about making square cuts so we'd have a square door. Let's check for square. Oh, just a little off. That's what we're after. Okay, all done. Okay, with our door glued up, we're now going to run it through a sander. Now this is a, a drum sander that I have available to me. We're going to sand front and back. That sands it nice and flat. Our glue joints will be nice and flat. And our back panel, because we used a half inch panel, it stands up just a little bit and that's gonna bring that down flush too. And so that's what we're gonna do now. We'll sand our door both sides, back first, then front, and have it nice and smooth. One of the ways I make sure that I have my joints sanded like they should be is I just put a little mark on there. And across my panel and down my styles. I know when those marks are gone, I've sanded properly. All right, we've run our doors through the wide belt sander, or the, or the drum sander, excuse me, sanded both surfaces down flat. We wanted to end up with 13 sixteenths, and that's exactly where we are. Now we sand the door with our finish sander. We'll sand back and front and edges. 80 grit first, then 120, then 150 for our final sand. Between our 120 and 150, we'll put an eighth inch round over edge around the outside as our finished edge. Let's do that now. Okay, we've sanded our door 100, and, or I mean 80 grit and then 120. We've put the eighth inch round over edge on. I went through and just put some putty on the joints and on the ends where the styles and rails met just to make sure that there wasn't any gaps that I couldn't see so that when we paint, we don't have to go back and fill after paint. And I, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. I always do that so that my paint turns out better. So we'll go ahead and sand it with 150 now and break all the edges. By break edges, I mean smooth off the sharp corners. Um, that also makes a better paint job. And we'll do all that and then it'll be ready for paint. So let's do that now.
Okay, there we are, finished with our table saw shaker style door, all sanded, ready for the paint shop. It's been a joy teaching you how to do it. Want to remind you all to subscribe. We have lots of fun projects and learning tips to bring to you, so don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thank you again for watching our video on how to build shaker style doors, and thank you for watching Woodworking with Wes. Mm -hmm.